Hello everybody out there in floss tube world. This is Vicki, AKA the Virginia Stitcher, coming to you with my first floss tube video of 2024. Welcome, welcome everybody. I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday season, however you celebrated it, and that you had a wonderful start to your, first, to your new year. And I pray that um, everybody has a wonderful year ahead. So I'm going to, this video here, if you read the description, this is gonna be my whip parade. This is going to be all of the projects that I have worked on since my last whip parade, which was in the middle of July of 2023. So it's almost six months worth of projects that I've been working on. So I wrote down a couple of stats. Well, first of all, I wanna welcome you all and I wanna, um, I looked over at my notes because I have a tendency to just jump right in and get going and forget to, <laughs> to actually, um, to actually, I want to let you guys know that I did read each and every comment. And unfortunately, I didn't have time with the holidays and everything going on to reply to every comment, but I have read them all. And I thank you, thank you so much for all of the wonderful comments that I did get. Um, I have been busy. We did have a kind of quiet Christmas. I think when I last checked in with you guys, which I think was probably the beginning of December. Let me look back on my notes. When was my last video? My last video was on, yeah, December 14th. So just a couple of, you know, 10 days before Christmas. So um, I, I did let you guys know that one of my dogs was going to have surgery. And she did. We had her in on... Um, I think it was like about five days before Christmas. I think it was December 20th. She went in <clears throat> and had to have a mass removed off of her neck. She had a huge um, cluster of, it looked like blistery cysts on her neck and she doesn't wear a collar regularly. Um, she's an indoor dog. We have a fenced backyard and we don't leave the collars on them all day long, but it ran and it was up here. It was right on her, it went from her ear she has a scar now, an incision that went from her ear here all the way across to the middle underneath her chin here. So the poor thing had to wear a cone for the last two weeks. And I just took her in about four days ago and had the stitches removed. And then yesterday she went to the groomers for the first time since then. But unfortunately she had a cone on her head that had to be strapped down so that it wouldn't come up and hit under here where her incisions were. They had to strap the cone down to this harness that we we don't walk our dogs in with a collar. We put a harness on them. So she had to wear, it's a soft harness. It's a padded soft harness, so it's not uncomfortable for them to wear. But she had to wear that 24 seven for two weeks with the cone attached to it. So what the vet had done was taken the cone that I have, because I had purchased one when one of our other dogs had a surgery, I think when she was spayed. Uh, I think it was when the, the younger one was spayed, I got a, a soft cone to put on them that attaches with Velcro so that they didn't have to wear the big plastic one because my dogs are kind of small. They're only about 12 pounds or Maltese Yorkie mixes. And um, so they attached the cone, they tied it to the harness. So she had to wear the harness and the cone for two weeks. So when we took the cone off of her, um, to have the incisions taken out. When she came back out of the back office of the vet, she looked like she had two pom-poms on top of her head because with the surgery and then wearing the cone and all that kind of stuff, it matted up her ears so bad because usually she has long hair on her ears. Her ear hair is about that long and they they hang down like two little pigtails. I don't, I've shown my dogs before in the videos. Right now she's laying up, <clears throat> laying upstairs. So I don't have her down here with me. Plus I have my, I'm in my craft room. I'm sitting on the couch in my craft room because I needed a big space to lay all of the projects I'm gonna show you guys in a minute. But she's upstairs and I had to lock the door so my husband doesn't come in because he's working right now upstairs in the office. He does not know I'm filming a video and I didn't want him to barge in. Um, in the middle of my video. So I put a note on the door, it says I'm filming and I locked the door. So him and the dogs are locked out of here. But um, she uh, had two big, I mean, her ears were just matted, hugely matted. We tried to brush it out and the groomer I use, she's been grooming my dogs for years. Um, she was my neighbor in the previous house that I lived in. And um, 
I still take my dogs all the way. You know, I drive half an hour to go take my dogs back to be groomed by her. And she said, oh, no problem. I'll work on them as best I can. And so she had to cut out a lot of the ear hair. So her little ears are thin now, but she at least still has some of her ear hair. She didn't have to shave all of the hair off of her ears. So she doesn't look too, too weird. And of course, her whole neck is shaved and one of her paws, one of her front arms where they put the IV in her. So that was an ordeal for her. I, feel, I felt bad when we picked her up. She was whimpering and slobbering on herself. She was just coming out of the surgery, out of the anesthesia. So she's doing good now. So that's a good thing. And they biopsied the mass that they removed. And luckily, none of it was cancer. It was all some kind of benign. There were two different kinds of cysts that they were. So some adenoma, something, something, something. So she's doing good. She's doing well. So we had that going on. Uh, had a little bit of family here for Christmas. Had a get together with the neighbor um, on the one side of me. She was having, uh, they were having people over for a little ho holiday gathering, a bunch of the neighbors. So I got to meet and talk to some of my neighbors some more. And um, I think that's about it as far as what we've been doing. My husband's birthday is coming up this week. Um, I've been seeing a chiropractor because I have a bad, I had a really, really bad fall. Uh, about 20 years ago, and um, I injured my neck really bad. Um, in fact, my doctor was surprised I didn't break my neck. When I finally went to the doctor's office to complain about that my neck was still hurting after I'd fallen three days before, he said, you did what? <laughs> and he's, he said, you could have been walking around with a broken neck. Um, so I, uh, and now I started going to see a chiropractor again because my neck has been hurting, had been hurting me so badly. It was hard for me to really move my neck hardly at all. So now it's getting better. So I've been going to a chiropractor, had the dog surgery. Um, we had the holiday stuff going on. My husband's birthday's coming up. We, we just, you know, been a little bit busy, but I have found time in the evenings and things like that to stitch. So I have quite a bit to show you guys. And I'm gonna go ahead and start out with a little bit of stats that I got. So from the the past six months since my last whip parade, which like I said, was in the middle of July, looking down at my notes, I had 24 starts, new starts, three finishes. So two of those new starts were also a start and a finish. And I showed them on my last video, but I'm gonna go ahead and recap everything. And I, and I had another small finish. Um, also. So I have counted up since the middle of July. Um, I have worked on a total of 58 projects, 5-8. So um, I did a pretty good job of moving around on all of the whips that I have. I do have, I'm looking over at my, where I, the bins that I keep all my whips in and it's half empty. So I did work on probably about half of my stuff in the past six months. So that was good, along with the new starts that I started. So I do, like I told you, the plans I have for this year in 2024, since in 2024, I will be turning 62 and I was born in 1962, I'm going to be starting 62 whips. I have started one so far because I had a New Year's Day start. So, so far for the year, I have one new start and then I, probably going to start something else tomorrow because I have it kind of spaced out. I figured if I did five new starts a month, that would total 60 plus a New Year's Day start and a birthday new start. So um, I have five more new starts scheduled for this month. And if I sprinkle those new starts in five, six days apart, then it makes a nice even kind of distribution of my new starts. And that's kind of my thinking. But if I feel like picking up something earlier or later, then I will. Because I'm also still working too on whips that I already have. So I'm not just gonna be working on new starts. I also am gonna be working on stuff that I am I have and I'm going to try to focus on trying to get some finishes this year also. So I am gonna go over that with you a little bit, some of the stuff I'm thinking. Um, so let's get on into it. The first thing I'm gonna show you are the three finishes that I had. Um, I think this first one was the first finish that I had <clears throat> in the last six months. And this one I finished on um, Halloween evening on October 31st. I started it and I think it only took me two days to 
to stitch it and I finished it on Halloween and this is from the Winds of Autumn book by Blackbird Designs and I'm sorry I didn't pull the book out but this is um, Spell of the Moon it's just a small one have not FFO'd it yet so that was a finish that I had this year since my last whip parade so I had this one this one is on coconut shell uh, Ada looks like it's an Ada yeah it is a 16 count Ada in the color coconut shell by Bestitch Me and I have it folded up because I'm going to probably work on a couple of other pieces in that book and put them all on this piece of fabric you know put I probably have enough room to for another small and kind of a medium smallish size project to put on this piece of fabric so that is one of the finishes the next one um i've been working on and this is only my second one to finish and this one i didn't iron it i took it out of my nerd hoop that i had it in so it's going to have nerd hoop uh, creases in it but this was a prairie schooler santa that i finished so now i have two of these finished and um i'll probably start another one this year so that will probably be one of my new starts if I finish it, I might start another one because what I'm trying to do is as I finish one, I'm kind of trying to start another one. I haven't started one yet, but there will probably be at least one of these started this year. So that is my Prairie Schooler Santa, and I forgot what year he is, but that's the one with the where he's building a snowman. And it is done on uh, 18 Count Ada in the color Vintage Country Mocha with all of the called for DMCs. Okay, that's my second finish. And then my third finish was by Crescetta Agogo, and this was Little Penguin. And I finished this one, gosh, I think it was in December. I think this was my last finish for the year. This one is being stitched, was stitched on a, I think it's a 32 count Lugana. And I can't remember, I think it's Platinum Lugana, I'm not real sure with all of the called for DMC threads. And it came with this little peppermint uh, candy cane button. So that is Little Penguin by Crescetta Gogo. He is so cute. All right, those were my three finishes. Not a lot, but something. <laughs> um, along with all of the progress on all of the whips that I'm gonna show you. So what I was gonna do was show you my new year, new start uh, next, cause that was one of the last pieces I've been working on. So this is the first start for this year <clears throat> so far. If you guys are gonna be counting along, this is number one out of 62. <laughs> so this one is by Plum Street Samplers and it's called This Is The Day. Hopefully it won't glare too much with my ring light. This Is The Day by Plum, Plum Street Samplers. Okay. And I decided I did not want to stitch it on um, the tannish fabric that they call for. I don't know what, what the called for fabric is on this one, for sure. Um, but I decided, um, because there is a goat up here, or a ram, and a couple of more over here, and you can barely see them, even on the model. And I wanted mine to show up more, and I just wanted to do a different color. I am using um, a mix of all of the DMCs that are, um, there's a bunch of DMCs called for. Weak Style Works Classic Color Works on the chart. But I did switch since my color, I'm showing you my project. I decided to stitch this one on a piece of Picture This Plus um, 32 Count Lagana in the color Glacier. So it is kind of a greenish like a bluey green color a tealish blue and i started this on new year's day i started this with cindy and paula and madeline was stitching along with us on the zoom and we had a zoom on uh new year's af day afternoon and that's how far i got let me go ahead and well i don't so well not just on the zoom i also picked it up on the zoom i only got this a little bit of this border line here and most of this first uh, I think he's a ram because of his horns, a ram or a goat. 
And then I came in and I just started working on the flowers and then I counted over and decided that I, I did the smoke coming out of this chimney, got over here, outlined the roof of the house, and then I started filling in. I kind of got a couple of windows in and then I decided I wanted to start doing some brickwork. And I've been working on this um, probably for about three days, three or four days, picking this one up and working on it here and there because there's another piece I've been working on also a little bit. So um, because my fabric is blue, if, you'll know, if you're stitching this, you might notice that my border looks different. Instead, I use, I'm using Ecru and I'm using a different uh, blue color because the blue that was called for is very close to my fabric color. It was called Mint Julep by Classic Color Works. It looks like this. So it was very, very close to my color, my fabric. And I thought I didn't want it to blend in too much. So I switched uh, Mint Julep for, which one is this one? This one is Brethren Blue by Gentle Arts. So a darker tealish blue so that it would show up. And because this color is so much darker than the original called for, blue. Um, the other color in the border that was called for was hickory sticks. I have a have it here on the. So that would look good and a lot of um, color variation from a lighter to a darker color. But because, did it fall on the ground? <laughs> oh my gosh, it's in my hand. Um, these two I thought would look too dark for the border together the hickory sticks with my brother in blue. Those are two dark colors. So instead for the border where hickory sticks is, I'm going to use Ecru instead. So I have Ecru on my, so I'm using Ecru in brother in blue. So those are my changes. Everything else is um, the called for. So, and the reason being because I changed my fabric color, I'm not doing a tan. But you can see how my goat is showing up. You can see him. And like I said, my border will just be different. And the door is also called for with the mint julep, which I'll be using the brother in blue, the darker. But that is how far I got on This is the Day by Plum Street Samplers. So that's where I am on that one. So that was my New Year's Day start. And um, I'm gonna, because I have so many projects out here, like I said, I have 55 projects plus a few other things I'm gonna show you guys that there's almost 60 things sitting here. I don't wanna mix everything up. And this is just in a fancy dancy plastic bag right now. Because I'm gonna have 60 new, two new starts, I need to get busy on my um, bag making. I do have a lot of fabric and zippers to make the bags. I just need to get busy and do it. The next project that I was working on in January so far, so the first few days of January, I was working on, I picked up a whip, something I started back in Mania, the month of May um, of 2023, so I started this in May, is Rejoice Evermore by Bridget, Brenda Gervais, or With Eye Needle and Thread is her company. I love this piece. This one I would really like to work, try to work on a lot and see if I can get this one finished for the year, but we'll see. Because I do sweet wee. I stitch what I want when I want. So if it's calling to me, I'll work on it. If it's not, then it'll sit aside for a little while. Sometimes other pieces are calling to me louder. Um, this one I am stitching on a piece of 28 count Lugana in the color ivory just a, a regular ivory by um is this a zweigart it might be and i picked this back up and over the last couple of days i was working on it and this is how far i am so i do have some extra fabric over to the side i'm just not going to cut it but i came in i had already had all of this i came in and i filled in all of the flowers and leaves here. I already had this this going along the border. And then I worked these 
they're either flower buds or berries working down the side here. And then I decided I really, 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 now that I got the top finished, I worked all the way across the top, that I wanted to come down here because I want to get into the birds and the house down here. So I came in, came yesterday while I was waiting for the dogs at the groomer. Um, I sit in my car and I stitch. I came over and I brought this border down, this border down, put the words rejoice ever and um, started one of the stars there on the side. So I worked on that yesterday while I was sitting in the car and a couple of nights before I was working on that over here. So my whole piece is looking like this so far. Love, love, love this piece. It's just so pretty. Um, I am using, I told you I was using the Ivory Lugana and I am using, I think I'm using all the called for threads. Yep, because I didn't make any notes for any color changes. So I'm using all of the called for um, you know, classic color works and weeks dye works. And there's, I have one DMC in here. So, and that's just 712. Cause sometimes, um, a lot of times for the, the over dyed light colors that are pretty much white or off white, um, I just use Ecru or this one had it, uh, the conversion for DMC 712 instead. So I just decided instead of spending money on an over dyed kind of whitish color that doesn't really make a difference, um, I went ahead and just pulled in the DMC for that one. But the rest of these are all of the called for over dyed cotton threads. So that's where I am on this one. Let me get this folded back up so I can put it back in its bag. Because this is a good sized piece of fabric. I think this is a half a yard, but I'm not going to need the whole piece. Um, but I'm not going to cut it yet. Uh, the, I'll have a piece to the side that I can do something with left over. The last thing that I've been working on in January so far, these, these, I just pulled it up last night um, because one goal, I think one thing I'm going to try to do this year, I told you I want to try to get some finishes done along with all of my new starts, is I want to also try to finish some of what, what I call my ancient whips. And by ancient, I mean these are ones that I, I've been stitching since the 80s, I think mid late 80s, um, when my kids were little, when they were babies and they were born, I started stitching. I picked up stitching, so I and then I put my stitching down, um, probably early 2000s, and then I picked it back up in like 2019 or 20. So, um, this piece is what I call an ancient whip. Because this one comes from, here's the magazine page. This one is called Snowman. So see, back in the day, I, I did some of this, this kind of thing as gifts. I think I made one for my, a sweater, a sweatshirt, cross stitch for my mom, my sister, me. Um, but they have it even stitched on a sweatshirt where you'd buy the waist canvas and then you'd get it wet and you'd pull all the waist canvas out from underneath the stitches. And I remember doing that kind of stitching, but I am doing him on a on an Ada. I'm doing the snowman here. This was from the magazine, um, Cross Stitch and Country Crafts, January, February edition from 1996. So I started probably stitching this in the late 90s and then set him aside and never finished him. So what also happened was this, um, sheet and on the back side is the pattern and there's another sheet that has the rest of the pattern. Two sheets of the magazine. A wonderful um, viewer of my channel sent them to me because I had mentioned that in moves I must have thrown out my, I threw out my magazines. Did not realize I was stitching up this from a magazine and it's been sitting in a bin and I pulled it out of the bin and I said, you know what, I don't even have the pattern to finish the thing, but he looks so cute. And I mentioned it on my video. I said, caveat, be careful what you get rid of out of your stash because just make sure if you're gonna get rid of magazines that you're not already stitching something in a magazine because you won't be able to find the magazine and finish it. 
So she kindly gave me the two pages out of her magazine. And I believe her name was Carla. So thank you so, so much. Because now I can finish him. And because she, she gave it to me a while back and I still didn't get around to finishing him. And I left him in my hoop because I was working on him this morning. Because I pulled him out last night and <clears throat> looked up the little bit of threads I still needed to finish him. Because he's done with DMC and um, a little bit of Krynic and blending filament. But uh, for sparkliness in him. And I am stitching this. I feel like it's an 18 count. Because as I'm stitching on it, it seems smaller than the 16 count I usually stitch on. So this is an 18 count um, navy blue Ada. And I didn't take him out of the hoop because I was working on him down here. But I will show you what he... I had finished him. I don't know if you can see the sparkle of the Krynic in there. But this is all done with a blend of a DMC and a Krynic. All the blue and white in there. And in person it does sparkle. And also in person as I'm stitching on it, it looks awful up close because I am blending together. Did I bring it here? Yes, I did. I am blending together. It, it tells you to put together, let me show you real quick. This dark Krynic with this light blue color, this um, DMC 813 with 033 Krynic. So the the two together do not blend well. And no matter how well I try not to have it all twisted up looking, it still just looks twisted up in a mess. So when you look at it up close, when you got your good reading glasses on and you're up there with your eyes up close stitching on it, it looks terrible. But I said, you know what? From far away with it sparkling, you can't tell it looks all twisted and terrible. So I'm gonna keep on working on it. Crynec is not my favorite thread to work with, but I'm, I'm dealing because at least past me did all of the other Krynic all through here. And I did all of the back stitching in the snowman already. Yay. Past me <laughs> because you know what? That was probably 25 years ago. So I had 25 year younger eyes back then. I was probably only in my thirties when I was stitching on this late thirties, early forties. So, um, well, probably late thirties. 25. I don't know. <clears throat> Got to do the math. But what I had left, what I had done in the last little while was I had all of this gold stitching down here underneath the snowman. So I, I did these two boxes, this, this checkerboard, and I was filling in this Krynic blending um, stitching, stitching right there. So I still need to finish that one and do that one. And then I need to move up. I was studying the pattern and it looks like I did not stitch I still have to do the chronic parts in these areas right here, up at the top. And then there are two more blocks up there to finish off his framing. And then he's finished. So I really, really, really wanna to try to get this guy finished. So it looks like I just have to do this little bit up here and I'm working down here doing this. And then he'll be finished. So, yay, yay, yay. And I love him. That's why I did not get rid of him. Because he's cute. And he's going to look adorable. Done up as some kind of a small. Somewhere. You know, somehow. I'm, I'm hoping by next uh, winter to have him FFO'd into a finish that I can display in the house. So, I want to get him done. I want to get him finished. And off of my whip count. Because he's just been sitting there for 25 years waiting for some more love. So, he's getting the love. So that's what I've been busy working on since the beginning of the year. So those three things, that's, that's, those are the three pieces right now. So what I did with the rest of all of the whips that I've been working on that I want to show you, um, I tried to kind of put them in piles of Christmas, regular kind of whips that aren't seasonal, and I have Halloween and um, autumn stuff. Because I've been, like I said, it was since the middle of July. So probably about August, I started picking up some of my um, Halloween and fall things. And then I switched over to Christmas and winter things. And in there was a blend of some regular stitching too, some non-seasonal. So I have my wintery stuff. And it's not all in exact order of when I worked on it. Because some of these pieces I might have worked on once for two or three days and put aside and haven't touched since then. 
or I've pulled it up and worked on it two or three times since July. So, oh, this is on a Q-snap. I was like, where was my piece? This one, this first one is by Little House Needleworks, and this is Kringles. I've been seeing some people working on this. People have been finishing this. I saw a um, Dina Crosshatch Quilts, not Crosshatch Quilts, Half Stitch Cross Stitch. She finished hers this year. She already has it, had it framed and hanging on the wall in her house. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And I know she was inspiring um, Lori Shikalone with Once Upon a Stitch to finish hers. And I knew mine needed more love because I started this one a couple of years ago. I'm not sure exactly. I probably started it in 2021. And I thought I need to show this one some more love because I'm still up here at the top. This one is a quite a big piece. I'm stitching this one on, still on the Q-snap because I was working on it not too long ago until I pulled up my New Year's Day start. I was working on some of these pieces. And this is where I am. This one is on a 16 count Ada, and I think it might be in the color Amber, Amber or Dirty Ada. I don't know if I have a note. Let me look in my bag real quick. Do I know, do I know, do I know? Amber, 16 count Ada in the color Amber. It's not an over it's just a regular uh, fabric. And what I had done since, I already had this over here done. So I finished doing all of this framing in on the third window over here. And I finished filling in this part of the roof. I had one of the colors of the shingle in there. Um, but I needed to fill in the darker color. And then I came over and I started doing some more framework for the, the middle dormer and this uh, railing that goes along the roof line. And that's what I was working on. So I, I spent a couple, two, three days working on that in December. And then I still had it on the Q-snap because I was hoping to be able to pull it up and maybe work on it some more. But we'll see. If not, it'll come off the Q-snap and sit, sit and wait its turn again. <clears throat> so that is lots of fun. I really am enjoying that. I'm working on it with the Call Forward DMCs on that Ada. And I probably have a note here when I started it. I can let you know real quick when I... Do I? Do I? I don't know. Most of these older whips, I had a page in here that I wrote down when I started it and everything. I'd have to look back on my whip tracker sheets to see when I started it. So, let me try to put stuff down on the floor there nicely without throwing it. The next piece is a new start that I started in December. And it's the Noel Sampler by Brenda Gervais with thy needle and thread. And I usually, a lot of times I start in the upper left-hand corner. And that's what I did with this one. This one is being stitched with, I'm pretty sure the called for. Let me see if I have what fabric and everything. Oh, Vicky, Vicky. I'm sorry. Thought I knew what color fabric. It is Oh, this is limestone. This is 32 count Lugana in the color limestone. And this is where I got to on this one. I didn't, um, since I, show, I showed it to you in my last video, have not done any more on this since then. So my last video was December, what did I say, 14th? So I worked on this in the beginning of December, but I haven't worked on it since, but it was on the Q-snap because I was hoping to pull it up and work on it some more. Let me show you up close. That, this right here is part of a bird, a start of a bird on a tree trunk there, a branch. And it started the house. So that's how far I got on that one. And I think I'm using all the called for threads for that one. And like I said, that's limestone Lugana. That is that one. And another new start that I had in December. I was just filling all the things that I wanted to start in December. I don't know why, when I knew I was already going to... I think it wasn't 100% set in my head that that's what I was going to do is start 62 new starts next year. So I think I was just going crazy and starting all of the Christmas things that I wanted to start. This one is North Pole by Kathy Barrick. And a lot of people are stitching this right now. It's a brand. It's a new piece of hers. 
came out just recently. And I am stitching this one on a piece of linen. Is it written on here? Yeah. Um, this is Needle and Flax Fragile. And it is a 28 count linen. And that's how far I got on this one. So I got some of the border, a couple of the deer. I started some of the trees. This is only the one color green. I didn't pick up the other color yet. And the Santa's hat, his little slouchy hat there, started. So that was the start of the Santa Claus. This is a little hat. <laughs> and just a bit in here. So a little ways to go on that one. Still got some to do. So enjoying, enjoying. I don't want to throw all this stuff on the floor. These things that I recently have been working on that I was thinking I might still work on so I didn't take them off the Q-snaps yet. I, if, they, if the whole piece, if you can see everything, I didn't take it off the Q-snap. So this next one that I was working on a little bit is um, the, by Tiny Modernist, and it's called Jolly Christmas Bell Pool. Looks like this. So it's a long skinny piece. And I am stitching this one on, it's like a Lugana. Hmm, this looks like platinum to me. And I'm using the called for DMCs. And this is how far I am on this one. So since you last saw it, I came in and I filled in this part of, this part of his hat. I already had the pom-pom done. I think I had already, already kind of put in some of that. I had to finish filling that in, fill that in. Got some of the, the pole here. And this is the start of the sign that'll say Noel. That's some of the lettering right there. There's my, there's my thing. So I am right here. So the word, the, the sign that says Noel, the hat. I haven't done the Santa and the reindeer at the top, the snowflakes yet. And I gotta work my way all the way down that <laughs> long bell pull. Because I have um, my fabric doubled over in my Q-snap here. So I still have a long piece of fabric that's probably gonna hang down to about here to finish him on. Finish this beautiful pattern, this beautiful piece. I am stitching it, oh, I told you, with the called for DMCs. Oh, wait, it wasn't in that bag. That's the next project. Oh, and I had a commenter ask it where I get all my needle minders. Do I make them? Whatever. I make a lot of them. And way back when I first started cross stitching again, and I found out about needle minders, I ordered some. So this one is one that I ordered off of Etsy. And I thought it looks kind of like a Christmas candy, like a peppermint a little bit frosty. So I, um, that one was purchased, but I can't remember the company that I purchased that one from. And some, like the on um, another one I'm going to show you in just a second here, is one I made. Um, I also take just trinkets, brooches, pendants, whatever. Stick a magnet on the back with E6000 glue, let it dry overnight, and then uh, you have a needle minder. This one is, this next project comes out of the book Home for the Holidays by uh, Blackbird Designs. And it is the Christmas garden. I showed it to you in the last video that I restarted this on a lighter piece of fabric. It's a Lugana. I think this one is, look and see if I have it in my notes. I'm trying to open the page. It looks like this. And before when I, before I restarted it, I had started up here. I had a lot of this top section done but I really was not liking the the fabric I chose. It was a Heritage Ada, 16 count Ada. If I picture this plus and the color Heritage, it had a greenish hue to it. And all of my kind of gold colors that I had picked weren't showing up. And I thought, I'm gonna have to pick all of those out. And I thought, you know what? No, I think I just wanna do it on a lighter fabric. And so I picked an Ivory Lugana to do this on. And I started down here because I'd already stitched all that and I didn't feel like restitching it yet. So I started down here in this corner. And since I last showed it to you, I have not worked any more on it, but I did work on this since the whip parade. So 
And this is where I am. So this is on an ivory Lugana, uh, 32 count Lugana. And this is where I got to on this one so far. Now this needle minder here is one that I made from a, a brooch, I mean a, a pendant. You can see where it would hang off of a chain. Um, I pick these up when they're on sale at Joann's or Hobby Lobby or whatever in the jewelry section. And then all I do, like I said, is glue a magnet onto the back with E6000 glue, let it dry, and then I just have the, the partner magnet. These magnets I've had, they were in my, um, with my paper crafting. I had them with my um, scrapbooking stuff because I, I used to make scrapbook albums where I had pockets and things and flaps. I've also made my husband an organizer pouch pocket thing that has magnetic flaps and things like that where you put the magnets inside the paper. And then when you fold the two pieces of paper together of your folder or whatever, it would magnetize it shut. So um, that's all I did here. So that one is just a, a large pendant that I get, I pick them up when they're like 50% off or whatever. Stick a magnet on it and then I'm good to go. So that's where I am on this one. This one I am using um, the called fours I decided not to use. And instead I picked up a bunch of Victorian mottos out of my stash. And they are, cause it's only four colors. So I picked these four colors. I picked, well, I picked two greens and two reds since there's a lot. Um, two greens that look very, I mean, two reds that look very, very close. And then I put, picked two little bit different greens and a brown and this one is for the gold color and it's a uh, golden browns and red currant dried cherry all by victorian motto this one is antique dried rose leaves and 1820 sage and the brown color that i picked and i just have a large victorian motto stash so i picked these for my stash cloves so these are my colors. So I should have plenty, plenty of thread to finish that because I wanted to make sure I had enough of the red and the green. And uh, I like how all of these colors are working together on my piece. So that's that one. Put that back down here. And uh, I had it on the q snap because I was hoping I could get some more done on it. But I, you know, with Christmas and everything too, I've been... And then, like I said, I had my New Year's start, so. Plus, I had a Christmas Eve and Christmas Day start. That's in the stack here somewhere. Um, I did start this one. Well, not, I didn't start it. This is a whip I worked on. I already had this going. Um, they were doing a Ginger Shoal uh, birthday sal for Ginger on uh, Instagram. And she wanted to, she always wanted to start this Prairie Schooler. It's the Christmas Village by Prairie Schooler, and I had it, and I had already started it. I already had this building and a few of these trees done, and this horse and sleigh that he's uh, pulling some trees on. I already had that part done. So I came in and I picked it up, and this one is on a light blue, like Icelandic blue, I think. 16 count Ada. It's not an overdyed Ada, it's just a regular Ada. And I came in and I filled in more of the trees, this building, this tree, and I started this other building. And I think I extended that little bit of a border over a little, because I think it was only to like here or something. So I moved the border over. And I just took, took a length of thread and just stitched it a little longer. It's all uh, done with all of the called for DMCs. And that's where I am on that one. Love it, love it, love it. Thanks, Stitchy Linda. She had commented and said that, you know, my uh, fabric color looks a lot like hers. She's doing something in very, very similar color. Some kind of a light, light blue. It's kind of like a grayish, light blue, bluish gray color. This next one is the piece that I picked up as my um, New Year's Eve, New, uh, not, not, New Year, not New Year's, 
Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. I worked on it Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and then I continued to work on it for the, the few days between Christmas and New Year's. I was uh, picking this up and working on this some. This is a new start, and it um, there is a, a stitch along for this. Oh, here we go. It is um, Lori Holt. She's B Lori One on Instagram. She started the 25th day stitch sow, dasher and dancer sow, cross stitch. So, um, and the Christmas cross stitch sow. So it goes for all of those stitch along hashtags on Instagram. And it's the Dasher and Dancer by Ho Hobby House Needleworks. So I just ordered this from their website. I went to hobbyhouse.com, um, hobbyhouseneedleworks.com or something like that. Went to their shop and you can, I just ordered this as a PDF download and printed it off and I had it immediately. And I kitted mine with DMC 815. So that's what I'm gonna stitch this one in. I'm stitching this in 815, if you can see that, it's kind of glaring. And I have a few skeins in there of that. And I am stitching this on a piece of 32 count limestone Lugana. So this is a plain, not an over-dyed Lugana. And I was working on this, like I said, between Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve, picking this up and trying to work on this. That's how far I got. So while I was sitting in there watching Christmas movies with my husband, <laughs> and we were watching things like Christmas with the Cranks and Christmas Vacation and um, all of the fun movies, uh, I I would sit in there and then stitch on this one. So this, this is how far I am enjoying it, enjoying it. And this is a piece I'm going to try to pick up and work on on the 25th of the month every month this year. That's a plan so that I can get quite a bit done on it and not just have it sit there stalled like that till next Christmas. So, because that's how that sow is supposed to run. And I'm going to try. I'm not, I'm not really good at stitch alongs and I'm not promising I'll stay with it, but I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to try. Because a lot of times I even forget it's the 25th. I'll just be stitching and go, oh, yesterday was the 25th. I should have been stitching on my Dasher and Dancer. I forget. I just grab something and start stitching on it. Or if I'm really into something else that I don't want to put down and it's the 25th, I might not pick it up and stitch on it. This one was a new start um, I don't know, back, I think, beginning of December, maybe. And this is At Home by Bridget Gervais. Was it the beginning of December? This might be a new start since I last... Yeah, it was. This is, I think I did this at the end of December before I picked up Dasher and Dancer for my Christmas Eve stitch. I think this, I was working on this after I checked in with you guys last. And I am stitching it with all of the called for over dyed threads. So it calls for a bunch of weeks. And um, some classic color works, uh, general arts. There's a bunch of, these are the thread colors. And I am stitching this on a piece of, um, is it 28 count? I think so. Sometimes I don't know what I do with my stuff. Thought I had it in the bag. Um, this is a piece of linen that I picked up at Salty Yarns when I was there for this piece. It's, um, Milk and cream and sugar, cream and sugar by fiber on a whim. And I think, I believe this is a 28 count because it seems like a little bit of a loose weave. And that's how far I got. Because then I put it aside and start working on Dasher and Dancer. So um, there are, the middle of these are supposed to be specialty stitches, but I've, I just stitched cross stitches in there because that's always an option. I didn't feel like doing the satin stitches there, so I didn't. I do do satin stitches sometimes, but I didn't feel like doing it there. Just, but eh, doesn't need it. So, it is not a reproduction. I don't feel like I need to do it true to the 
completely true to the pattern and doesn't mean it always will with reproductions, but I usually try to. So that is my at home by Bridget Bay. <clears throat> Another new start I had in December, and I think you saw this one last time. But it's my whip parade, so I'm going to show it to you again. And I don't think I have any more progress on this since I showed it to you in the last video. But this one is by Plum Street Samplers, and it's called This Happy Morning. Looks like this. And... Um, I am using, what am I using for this one? I don't know why I'm not using the one called for. Huh. <clears throat> I'm using all of the called for except for one of the DMC colors. I switched in 3012 for 3013. Maybe, oh, I think it was because the two greens were too close in color. And I wanted a little bit of variance in my color. So I have all of the called for here, except for that one. Um, 3012 and 30, I put in 3013 instead, I think was because it was too close to this other green color and I didn't want them to blend in too much. This one is on a piece of 32 count ivory Lugana. And that's how far I am. So, let me bring it in closer. That is what I got done on this one so far. And I did stitch the white stitches in here, but it's hard to tell on the ivory. Those are gonna be the only thing that goes to in. Otherwise, I love this ivory fabric for this piece. It's just, I'm not, they do show up more in person than they do on the camera. And there's not a whole lot. It's just some random, random snowflakes around on it. And <clears throat> other than that, it, the rest of the colors are looking fine on this piece of fabric, so I'm not that worried about that. It'd be nice if they showed up better, but I'm not gonna switch my fabric or anything for that. I don't think so. I'll check back in with me next year. I might be like, oh, I had to restart that one because I didn't like how I couldn't see the snowflakes. But even on the, the, um, the model here, you can't see the snowflakes. There are snowflakes in here, but you can't see them. So. They didn't worry about them. I guess I'm not gonna worry about them. They're just snowflakes. It's not not like my This Happy Day where it's the little goats. I really wanted them to show. I didn't want them to be where you couldn't even see them. Snowflakes, not as big a deal. Uh, this next piece is by Teresa Kogut. And this one is Heaven in Nature. Get it out of the bag here. Get out. <clears throat> and it looks like a lease. It's a big piece. I didn't work on it a whole lot, but I did work on it some since July. Um, I'm using all of the call fours except for I switched out Weeks Dye Works Porpoise in place of Joshua Tree. Because Joshua Tree was kind of a greenishy hued. Um, gray kind of greeny gray and it's used for like the little raccoon and a couple other things in the chart here it says little raccoon and I did not want him to be greenishy colored so I, I switched to more of a gray color I am stitching this on a piece of fabric that I got from Fortnite Fabrics um, Caravan Tan it's a 32 count Lugana so this is an over dyed and I have his thread hanging as I was working on this at a retreat when I went to Ocean City last time. <laughs> and then it was time to pull up a different st thing and I was like, okay. And I dropped my thread right there, <laughs> right in the middle. But I think this year I was working on um, like this, this bird here. I think I put in the rabbit. So I did work over in here. I think I only had this over here kind of done. So I did work on it some since July. And love it. It's gonna be a big piece. It's gonna take me a while to do. It's not gonna be one that's gonna get finished this year. I know that. Highly doubt it. 
Only if I sat there and I said, you know what, besides my 62 new starts, I'm going to work solely on this, then maybe it would get done. But I highly doubt I'm going to do that. Even though I love the piece, I love a lot of things in my stash. So um, this is not going to get individual attention like it would need to get done for this year. But it will get done one year. This one was a new start. This next one is by Little House Needleworks. It's called Jingle All The Way. And it looks like this. It's not a super big piece. It's not a super small piece, but it's not super big either. I am not stitching mine on a tan fabric like this. I am stitching mine on a piece of 32 count Lugana in the color Dove, which is a gray blue color. But I am using most of the, well, half of the called for. And I did sub in some colors. But this is where I am. I uh, No more progress since the last time I showed it to you. But this is something that I started in, I think, the beginning of December or end of November after Thanksgiving. So it has been started since my last whip parade. But I have not done any more work on it since then. And this is how wide the piece is. But it will be a little longer because there is some more stuff underneath these two buildings, underneath the barn and the house. There is a sled, some um, quilts, things like that hanging up. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So that one got set aside for a little while. But I did get good progress on a start on that one. That was a good start. I like trying to get a good start on things. I don't like to just put a few stitches in and set something aside and not touch it again for months. I try, for the most part, to get a decent start. At least have it looking like something. Um, the only time I don't is like when I like when I did the mania, or I did the twelve by twelve for New Year's Eve last year, not this year. And I was only getting an hour, so I got a little tiny start, and so I was trying to pick the pieces back up through the year and get some more progress on them. This next one is Quaker Christmas 2 by Bygone Stitches. It looks something like this. It's hard to see because you can't see the whole pattern because I've kind of folded it off and not shown the whole complete edge over there. But that is, it's a Quaker Christmas song motif one. I am using a variety of red and green Victorian motto threads for this piece. I can hear my husband coming down the stairs. Hopefully he sees my note. I can hear him at my door. Um, so here's the greens and the reds. I just picked up stuff that was similar in color, switching them around for different motifs on the piece. And I am stitching this one on another Fortnite Fabrics in the color Plush, 32 Count Lugana. Um, and let me, this is on a big half a yard piece of fabric because it's going to be a good size piece when it's done. And I just didn't cut my fabric. I'll cut it when I'm finished. This is where I am on uh, Christmas Quaker 2 by Bygone Stitches. So not very far because I started this last Christmas and I worked on it some more this year. I think I had, last Christmas I did, last December I think I did this part and I had started this and I had a couple of the words here, oh come, I think. I got all ye F, I started the F, finished this motif and started that motif. So I only got about half that much more. So at that rate, it's gonna take me 20 years to finish this one. So I need to pick up the pace on this one a little bit. <laughs> It will get done one day, but again, just like the other piece I was talking about, it's not going to get done this year. Not this year. I highly doubt it. Never say never, but I also know my limitations for the most part. I do have to sleep. I do have to eat. I do have to cook dinner. I do have errands. I do have a house to clean. I do have a husband I spend time with and family, so... I don't stitch all day. Um, 
The next piece, oh, this one's so cute. This one I started, oh my gosh, I think in 2021. I love it. I just don't get around to getting, you know, a lot of stitching on it, but it is so cute. This one is being stitched on a piece of um, Milk Chocolate 16 Count Ada. And this one, let me show you the chart first, is by Sugar Stitches, and it's called It's a Marshmallow World. This one is precious. The colors of this are so vibrant and pretty. So by Sugar Stitches, 16 Count Ada and the color Milk Chocolate. And I can fold this one in half because I still have half of the fabric I haven't used yet. Let's fix it here. And that's where I am. <gasps> Look at it. I love it. I love it. Love it. I don't know why I've only gotten this far on it in this amount of time. But what I did this time when I brought it, uh, picked it up, I did this window, I did this Christmas tree, and I brought this checkerboard border down and around the corner. I'll tell you what, <clears throat> I was working on this while I was watching some TV too, some Christmas movies and stuff, and um, spending time with my husband in the other room. He, <laughs> just this checkerboard border right here, I think three nights. I was probably working three hours a night. That's probably nine, ten hours of stitching, just doing that checkerboard border. And then the little, the the plum pudding and the a Christmas cake and, I mean, it just, and the little snowflakes and this whole tree. That, <clears throat> probably, I probably was working almost a week on this in the other room for my evening stitching. And that's where my border ends is right there so far. It is adorable. I love it. I love this piece. I really do. I was actually just watching um, a whip parade by Jen, the caffeinated stitcher, and she was showing a bunch of new starts. I think she's got 190 something starts that she's going to, she's got the plans to start. And one of them was this piece. And I know she's going to love it. It is so cute. It's so adorable. Um, I have a lot of red, green, gold kind of standard Christmas color pieces, and I just love this, the teal pink. Because these are the, and it's all stitched with DMC. So, these are the called for DMC. Whoop, I dropped one of the pink colors. Oh, <laughs> I dropped the white. Oh, these were tags. I'm, these were just gift tags I bought and used them as tags for my things. But look at the pinks and the, the tealy greens and... Oh, it is so, 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 so cute. And I knew I was going to need an extra skein of the pink that I'm using in the border. So I have that sitting in there ready to, ready on standby. But I love this piece. It is so adorable. And it's going to be really sweet when it's all finished. Okay, the next one is my Santa Village by Little House Needleworks. Is it Little House? Country Cottage Needleworks. This one is a 12 part series and um, I'm using all the called for DMC. So these are just um, some tags I made with some of my scrapbooking paper and um, put all of my DMCs on there. All the called for, I have all of the buttons ordered already in here and I have all 12 parts, but I'm not gonna show you all of them because it's gonna take forever. And some of them are calling, each one calls for one or two um, over-dyed cotton threads, like uh, Classic Color Works. <clears throat> I think they're all Classic Color Works. And I am stitching this one on a 32 count Lagana in the fifth color Vintage Country Mocha. And I can fold this because I'm not going to, I'm not even on the bottom half of this piece of fabric yet. And that's where I am. So I already had Santa's house, this first section. The first section ended right here where the, the tree is. I already had it done, but I did not have this part down here done. And I did not have the snowflakes in the sky done. So I completed part one. Then I came over to the house number two, which is the poinsettia house. And I did the house, the poinsettias. I brought over the, 
this uh, striped border up here and um, did some of the snowflakes in the snow. I think all that's left, I think there's still three snowflakes here that I did not finish and to, to do this holly branch down at the bottom there. But I will have, I almost have the second part finished. And like I said, it's a 12 parter. So this striped border, I was starting already because it's the top of the next section down because there will be four crossed and three rows down for this. And it'll fit on this piece of fabric. So that's where I got on Santa's Village by Little House Needleworks, Country Cottage Needleworks. <clears throat> Little House Country Cottage. I get so confused between the two. Country Cottage Needleworks. And I, I numbered each one so I know what order they go in. That one's number 12. Put a little sticky note on them. So I know one, two, three, four across, then five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Get them all put in a, a row. As I've seen this one completely finished and it's so cute. This one lady that I uh, stitched with at in Ocean City, she's completed it and put it on a um, frame that she painted um, red and white striped like a like a candy cane. And oh, it looks so cute. It's adorable. So that's where I am on that one. And then this one was a new start back in October, I believe, because I remember I took this when I went to my retreat at uh, Hat Creek, Virginia. And this is Reindeer Feed Sack by Carrie Child Samplings. And I am just stitching this one on a piece of 16 count Ada, and I think this is Fiddler's Cloth, I think. I wanted something that looked kind of burlappy for a feed sack. And so I got the word finest, the top. And I got this, um, the outline of that, and that's the start of a reindeer's legs, his back legs. That's how far I got on this one. This one is just being stitched with red and white. I am using, um, I think just regular white DMC. Now B5200 DMC. And I picked a red um, Victorian motto I had. This is paprika. So I picked that as my red. And that's all it needs is just the red and the white. And I'm doing it on this uh, kind of, you can see the fabric there has a, I think it's called Fiddler's Cloth. The next one is a new start. I didn't get very far on, um, cause I just wanted to get a start on it. Somebody else was working on this. Oh, I think it was Dina, half stitch, cross stitch. I was watching one of her videos and she had a, a start on this. And I thought, you know, I have this, had it for like three years in my stash and haven't touched it. And um, this one is Madame Le Fille and it's called Neige Montagna, yeah, uh, Snowy Mountain. And I'm stitching this one on a 32 count light taupe Lugana. And I am using all the call for DMC. And like I said, I didn't get that full on this one. I just started on, what is up and what is down? <laughs> Usually I do a left hand corner start, so I'm gonna assume it goes this way. I just started on some of the um, window framing on this one, so I didn't get very far. This is on a piece of fabric that I had started something else on that I didn't like how it was turning out and switched to a different color, so. <clears throat> but I think when I looked, that's not gonna get in my way, and if it does, I'll just have to frog it out. That's stitching down there in the corner. But that's how far I got on this one. I just was using two or three different brown colors and stitching some of the window frame. So like I said, I think it's just this little bit up in here. I really wanna get into the, where I can put start putting the background scenery in there. So, love it, love it. Some of my favorite fabric. Okay, I'm gonna, in my, 40 years of stitching. I have stitched on Ada, <clears throat> regular plain Ada, over-dyed Ada by different companies. I have stitched on 
Luganas, over dyed Luganas. I have now started stitching on some linens and over dyed linens. <coughs> and I can say, as of right now, I'm not gonna say it won't change. Some of my favorite fabric to work on is 32 count Lugana and not the over dyed Lugana, just the plain, like the, this is light taupe, wheat, ivory, 32 count, non over dyed Lugana. My stitches lay perfect. The fabric has body, but it's not super stiff. It doesn't get super creasy or wrinkled, but yet it has body to it. It just, that is my favorite, favorite, favorite uh, fabric to stitch on. The standard 32 count Lugana, non over dyed. I like, you know, using some over dyed stuff. I like Ada. I like linen. I like, you know, uh, uh, you know, having variety and stitching things on different stuff. But my favorite by far is just 32 count Lugana. This next piece is on 32 count Lugana. I think this one's on wheat. This is by Sheta Agogo. And this one is called Winter Sampler. And this one's being stitched on, this one's 28 count Wheat Lugana. And I'm using the Call for DMC. Sometimes I only can find the Lugana in 28 count and I go ahead and get it. And sometimes I can find it in 32. But when it's non over dyed, because that means there's no, a lot of times the over dyeing process causes shrinking and tighter weave in your um, fabric. If it's non over dyed, I love 32 count. If it's over dyed Lugana, I like 28 count because then it's not too tight. It's almost just like the 32 count. 32 count is my jam. I like stitching with two threads and 32 count, uh, two threads lay very nicely on a 32 count. Very, very nicely. Good coverage, not too crowded. So, fold this up. So this is Winter Sampler by Crescetta Agogo, and this is my start. This is where I started on this. Um, I had talked about it a little more before, that this, this Al and his branch ended up being one uh, space closer to the border here. So then I realized I needed to move other things over one extra space so it would line up with, by the time I got farther in, like on the house and everything. So that's what I did. Like this um, fence post here is <clears throat> counted one stitch farther to the right of this tree because I counted the, I started counting the tree off of the owl before I realized that my owl was one stitch closer. He should be two stitches away from the border instead of one. But there you go, there's my um, winter sampler. I love, I was saying before, I love the look of this border. I like Crescetta Gogo. They have some really pretty pieces. Like my little penguin I finished. He was Crescetta Gogo. So cute. So, so cute. So cute. Oh my gosh, people. <laughs> it's over an hour. Oh my gosh. So sorry. You guys are going to be in for a long one. Of course, if you clicked on this video, you know how long this video is. I don't know how long it's going to end up being, but I'm still just getting through the Christmas whips and, and my whip parade, and I still have, I'm not even halfway through. It's going to be a long one. Um, I think this is the last Christmassy one. Did I show all these down here? Yes, I did. This one is Santa Stops Here by Brenda Gervais with a needle and thread. Looks like that. And on this one, I was trying to get the house finished. This one is being stitched on 28 count Lugana in the color Rainy Day, Rainy Day by Be Stitch Me, because instead of a tan color, I wanted to do mine on blue. So Rainy Day by Be Stitch Me, 28 count. So this one's a 28 count Lugana, but it's been over dyed. So the weave is a little tighter. And I always, almost always stitch with two threads. So that's what I did. And I did get the house finished. So this is where I am on Santa Stops Here by Brenda Gervais. I don't have the beads and the ribbon on that wreath. 
above the candy house sign yet because I do the beading and stuff last. But this fabric is beautiful for this piece. I just like how the house stands out against the blue. I like it. Uh, so I still have to do all of the other Still have to fill in all of the snow down here. I still got to get Santa Claus, the snowman, the Christmas tree. There's a couple of reindeer and finish the border. Still have to do all of that. But I did get that big house finished. That is 100% coverage stitching, full coverage stitching there. So that is finished. The big part. Okay, now we're going to move into um, some whips that are not Christmassy, that are regular that I've been working on since July. This one is my Hands Across the Sea sampler and it's Elizabeth Weston. She is a big lady. She looks like this. She is gorgeous. I love her, even though she is a very large piece and it's gonna take a lot of commitment to stitch. She is enjoyable and she is beautiful. She is being stitched on a piece of 32 count Lugana in the color Stone Gray. Again, one of my favorite Luganas. It's not over dyed, 32 count. I'm stitching with all of the called all of the DMC conversion colors. There's two different silks that this one's called for, or DMC. She's done it in three colorways, and I picked the T DMC because I knew she was big. She was going to take a lot of floss, and I just went with the DMCs, which I love. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having the <clears throat> this needle minder. I, I left a needle minder stuck in here. So there's a needle minder sitting in the middle of my piece. I might have to... I always have a problem folding this one in half for some reason. My goodness. Stone Gray, Lugana. And this is where I am on this piece. I can't see what you guys see. Hopefully you're seeing it. So, um, this... Since the last time, I think, since my last whip parade, I came in and I worked on her probably two or three times. And I worked more of the border across over here. I worked all down in here, getting all of this done. So that's where she is. And that's just another needle minder I made with a pendant and st stuck a magnet on there. And it's just sitting with the piece. So um, it looks like I was working here last, trying to get this these flowers right in here. And then I'm thinking I wanna work down the side um, and get down into the, um, I wanna say he's a parrot, the bird here. So I am working, I've done all of this in here, worked this across. I'm doing the flowers here. They're hard to see on the, the model because it's a lighter fabric with the light threads. Um, but I want to come down and I want to start working down in here. See if I can get this done this year, at least. I want to get down to this, the Temple of Fame down here. So pretty. But I love her. And like I said, though, I had the border all the way across to the other corner over here. So that's how wide she is. She's that wide. And of course she'll be longer than she is wide. And let me, I can fold her up and bring her in closer so you can see more of the flowers, what I've been stitching in there, but there we go. She's on such a big piece of fabric. She's kind of hard to, and then I can't see around the back side of it. So let me stand up to see what you guys are seeing. So far, this is all just cross stitch, no specialty stitches, except for some over one stitching over here in the letters. But that is all just cross stitch, straight up cross stitch, two threads, 32 count Lugana, DMC. Okay. She is beautimous and <laughs> she is big. This is, a, well, not a whole yard. I don't know. I got this to cut to size at Salty Yarns. Um, 
for her. But she probably is on close to a yard of fabric. She's she's not teeny, but no stretch. I don't know if you can hear that upstairs. My husband is feeding the dogs and um, the kitchen's upstairs above me. And the little one, the younger one, she gets so excited she jumps up and down <laughs> while you're getting her food ready. Those girls love their food. Oh my goodness. Good enough. I'll visit that up later. Um, the next one is a piece I started um, back in April of 2022. Two. And this is um, by Teresa Kogut. It's in her Let Love Rain book, and it is the sampler Let Love Rain. <clears throat> Looks like this. And I started in the upper left hand corner. And I did switch out a few colors, but for the most part, I'm doing the call for on this one. And this is on a 28 count ivory Lugana. <clears throat> I think at the time in my stash, when I was looking for a piece of fabric I wanted for this, this color was the perfect, but it was a 28 count. So this is going to be kind of big. Kind of wish it was on a 32 count, but oh well, I'm not starting her over. And this is Let Love Rain by Teresa Kogut. So I think since... Since July, I think I worked some over here, and then I came down and I was working down in here. You know, bringing, coming down to the next line. I'm trying to, I was thinking of pulling this the next time I picked this up. I realized I did not do this, this same thing repeats over here, and then might do the couple flowers down in the border to kind of finish off the top section up there, and then, and then keep working my way down. Let Love Rain by Teresa Kogut. I started this one with Cindy, Paula, and Madeline. And I don't know if they've stitched a whole lot more on this one. And of course, my progress is very, very slow on it, but I'm working on it. <laughs> um, it I think the border gets kind of tedious on this one because there's so many color changes in each flower and leaf in this. And so the border takes a lot of work just to do alone on this one. This one's a, a massive project. The next one, is this a new start also? Yep. <clears throat> this is another new start I started with Madeline and Cindy. When we were in Ocean City back in December, we started Spring Moon together from Plum Street. Looks like this. I started up here with the moon. I picked this piece of fabric up at Salty Yarns while I was there in December. And it's a 32 count linen in the color Luna. It's a lakeside linen. And I'm using all of the called for DMCs. I, I decided to use all the DMCs for this one. Uh, so this is 32 count Luna by Lakeside Linens. And I'm, which way does it go? This way. I was in the middle of working on that basket when I was leaving the retreat and I didn't pick this up since. <laughs> this is where I am on it. I got the moon done. That moon took forever. My goodness. And then I came down and I started working a leaf down, got into this one tulip and then started in the basket. That's all on top of that house that's underneath here. So um, I was working up in here. This is all I got done. So I still got quite a bit to do on that one. That one's got a lot more work. I'm like amazed that this piece of fabric's gonna fit all of that, but I guess so, it seems so small. Because, you know, I, get them to, I got them to cut it to size, so it should fit. With a three inch border. So. I have to remeasure and make sure because it looks kind of small to me. Uh, the next piece is um, a Blackbird Designs piece. It's called um, Come Into My Garden. I started this at when I was at my retreat in Ocean City in April. 
picked up a piece of linen from Salty Yarns for this and was working on this on a piece of linen. This is stitched on, let me look at the tag they gave me for it. 32 count dirty teacup by Needle and Flax. And I am stitching it with all the called for over dyed cotton threads. And is this the front? Yep, that's the front. That's how far I got. Oops. So that's how much I got done on Come Into My Garden by Blackbird Designs. So a dirty teacup tea by uh, Needle and Flax. 32 count. Again, two threads. So that's it. So far I got. I was working on it for a while at my retreat. Sometimes at retreats I get busy talking and I don't get as much done. But it's enjoyable. And that's what counts. I get stitching done and I get to spend time with some friends. Some lovely ladies. Love them all. Okay, next one. What is in this one? I don't remember what's in this one. I think it's Live on Little. Nope. This one is Plymouth Sampler by Brenda Keys of the Sampler Company. And it looks like this. You want to see this finished? Check out Lori Shikalone with Once Upon a Stitch. She's the one that inspired me on this one because she was stitching on it a couple of years ago. She has finished it and framed it and it is in her craft room. I am stitching this one on a piece of 16 count Ada in the color light blue. I had a note on this one. Ice blue, 16 count Ada in the color ice blue. I'm stitching it with all the called for DMCs. This one has, it's pretty much a full coverage piece. There's a lot of stitching in this thing. And sorry for the wrinkles, but it's been in its project bag. So this, since July, I think I brought like this across. I worked on this building and started the next one. Worked on all this down in here and over here. I think I already, I think I even was working on this greenhouse too, but finished this whole next one, started that one. But see, all of the border is completely solidly stitched, just like this, all the way across, all four sides. And then all of this whole side of this is all solidly stitched with the pier, the water, the houses. And then it gets a little less full coverage as you work your way over here. There's more sky. There's more of the, the fabric showing here. But all of this, this whole border is solid stitched. And all of this in here and all the way across the bottom here is all solid stitched. And it is gorgeous. It's small, it's not that big. I mean, look at the piece of fabric. It's only gonna be this big. Wait a minute, it's the back. It's only gonna be this big. So it probably will come out to about here, but there's lots of stitching in it. So it's fun stitching, straight up uh, cross stitch, just, uh, it uses DMC. I think all of Brenda Keys, for the most part, use, as far as I know, use DMC. Um, she's an older designer. You know, she's been designing her um, patterns for a while um, and uses DMC. This next one is, um, by Blackbird Designs. And this one, I call it the Loose Feathers series. It's a series of three. It has um, the summer, the autumn, and the winter. And you stitch them all together. They, It works where the alphabet goes across all of the pieces. And I am stitching this one on a piece of 28 count Lugana in the color Dune. So this is an over dyed by Atomic Ranch Fabrics. And I am using the called for um, over dyed cotton threads and this is how far I got. So I am on the first one. This is Summer, where it starts with A. And it has the bird with the strawberry bush. So I got part of the strawberry, uh, strawberry bush in. I don't have any of the strawberries or the bird yet. I was working on the border. I was working on this one in April at Ocean City at my retreat. So that's how far I got on that one. All 
three charts back because I'm going to stitch them all three together as a complete set. For some reason, they did not put in the fourth uh, season. They just had the three seasons in it. This next one is a Blackbird Designs piece also. This one's called Merrily Merrily, We Welcome Spring. It's a nice big sampler. I am stitching this on a piece of Lugana by Seraphin Fabrics called Silver Linings, I believe. <clears throat> Seraphin, yeah, Silver Linings. It's a 28 count Lugana. And I am using the called for over dyed cotton threads and uh, stitching like I, usually all of these will be two threads. And this is where I am on this one. So I think since July I came and I did all of this over here and I might've worked some down in here, but I know I did this half for sure. Cause this might've been a mania start in 2022, maybe. So I picked it up and I worked on it some more this year. I love it, it is beautiful. I need to work on it some more, of course. Put it in there. My next one is a Hawkrun Hollow. This, uh, it's the map of Hawkrun Hollow. Uh, so I've been plugging away on this one here and there. So I have worked on this one a little bit more. Looks like this. I'm stitching this one on an Ada. On an over dyed Ada, 16 count. Let me see. Look at the color. It is Heartland by Picture This Plus. And I'm using a mix of the call for and a, a few DMCs I picked up myself. They're all DMC. I still have a thread hanging. <laughs> this is where I am. So I had already had that hawk all the way done. I think since I picked this up in July, I was working down in here, in this area. Got the tombstones. I was starting to work on this burial ground here um, and bringing all of this down a little bit. I think I might have also finished filling in this uh, sun compass. Not sure, <clears throat> but I know I definitely was working here. There are some white stitches for a fence that'll show up once I put the green background because there's grass here. So it will definitely show up once I do that. And this is where I am on Map of Hawk Run. That hawk on that is no joke. He takes up the whole left side of the border. Goes all the way down his wing. <clears throat> One of the colors I switched out, I know, was the blue. The water was a lot lighter colored. I did a darker blue. It's kind of dark, but I still like it. And I know I switched the color for this because the color that was called for matched his beak too much. So when I got up here where his beak was, I couldn't tell where his beak started and the banner started. Because a lot of times with the hawk runs, I think even this one might be charted with MPI silks. Yes. But then she has a conversion for DMCs. And I think sometimes in the conversion process, sometimes some of the colors um, in the DMC conversion match too closely because I also did that for the trees here. Some of the colors, um, like this one and this one are still close, but I think what she called for were so super close, it looked the same. So I wanted to have differentiate, different green colors in my trees there so you could actually see the different colors. So that's this one. And look at there. This is really gonna be a longer video than I thought. I hope you guys are hanging in there. Oh my goodness, you might have to split this up and watch it in two or three parts. This next one is Marianne Cop. C-O-P-P. By Brenda Gervais with a needle and thread. It's one of her pieces she came out with last year. Started this at no, I, I stitched. I started this before my um, 
retreat in April to Ocean City, but I worked on this some at Ocean City. But I think I had already started with a few of the little... I started down here in the corner because I wanted to get into this house and all of the fun stuff there. And that's what I was working on. I was getting up into there. It looks like this is a Lugana and overdyed. It is 28 count, not another sampler by Be Stitch Me, Lugana. And I'm using all of the call for overdyed threads, cotton threads, and this is where I am. That's how far I am. So I didn't get a whole lot farther in July. I think I just was working some more. I think I worked maybe this. I think I had like three of the flowers finished and some of this grassy area and fence and I brought it over. So I just extended it a little. Still not into the house yet, but I think I got a few more of the flowers done and a little bit more groundwork there. So I like this Be Stitch Me's fabrics. And not another sampler is a perfect sampler fabric. If you're looking for a lightly modeled uh, piece of fabric. Now this is something I started, didn't get very far on. Kind of was like, I don't know if I like my color combo of my fabric with my, oh, I'll just leave it in the plastic, um, but the thread I picked. But this one is on a, ugh, get it out. It's gonna be a big piece. This one is the letter V by GGR. And I started up in the corner. And what I had done was I had purchased off of Etsy from, where's the company, Fenway, Fernway. And I'd, uh, threads, I picked the color Blue Ridge. It's kind of a purpley variegated um, thread. And I live in Virginia in the Blue Ridge Mountains, or west of me. So I picked up a few skeins of that off of Etsy to do this piece on, and I picked out a piece of Silver Moon Lugana, 32 count. So it's a very light grayish color with the light purpley threads that have really light, light color in it. And I think it looks nice, so I might continue with it, but I didn't get very far. So I picked it up one day and I was working on it and I was like, hmm. But actually, when I'm looking at it, it looks like it'll show up and it'll be pretty. So I, I'll continue on it. I'll keep working away on it and see how I feel about this one. But I picked this one up in, I don't know, probably July or August and worked on it for just one day. I have all the thread. If I don't use it, it you know, I was like, if I decide I, it's not working for me, but it looks better than I remember it looking. So maybe because I was so close up on it while I was stitching it, I felt like I couldn't see it very well, that it wasn't gonna show up nice. But I think it will. This one is uh, Love Never Fails by Barbara Anna. I got inspired to stitch this one by um, Heidi. Uh, she is Stitching Faye on, on Floss Tube and Instagram. So I started this one and I worked a little bit more on it. I had already had this one going, but I came in and I was working more on the lady, get the flower back in July, August. This one is being stitched on a piece of 32 count Lugana in the color Vintage Country Mocha. And this is how far I am on her. Got the lady done. Well, except for the other side of her skirt down here. I didn't get that done. But that's where I am on this piece. Love it. I saw Heidi's finish and I was like, oh, I had to order it and start it. It just was so nice. And of course, for the date up here, where it says 1853, I'm going to put our wedding year, 20, 
14. For ours. And oof, this next piece I love. I had to restart this one a while back this year. And then um, I love the fabric it's, I'm doing it on now. Love, love, love it. It is a gray Lugana. Mm, I don't remember what color gray this is. I don't remember. This one is, where's a picture? This one is Tidal Rivers by By the Bay Needle Arts. All scenes. So it's all three of the scenes together. I think there's three scenes. And I started over here on this side. And I had to restart it. Um, and I love it now. And I was working on the top half of this piece. I'm working my way across a little bit. But this is where I am on the By the Bay Needle arts piece. And it's a 32 count Lugana. I think it's Whisper. Is it Whisper? It's just a light gray color. I wanted something dark enough that you could see the clouds in the sky because there are some clouds that will be stitched in the sky. It is pretty much a full coverage piece. So except for the sky, it's all full coverage and it's a long piece. So I'm working lengthwise on this piece of fabric. Plus the other piece of fabric I was using, I didn't like the way it was looking and I wasn't gonna have very much margin. I mean, I was only, I was trying to make it work on a piece of fabric where I was only gonna have about an inch margin. And I said, no, I don't wanna do that. I need to just start over. So I did on this one this year. And then this next one is one of my 12 by 12 New Year's Eve starts for last year. Not this, not in 2023, but in 2022. So not this New Year's Eve we just had, but the year before to bring in 2023. I started in at Fox River Mill. It looks like this. So I worked a little bit more on it after the New Year's Eve. I worked on it a little more after July. I didn't get too, too far, but I was working on it because I'm using a bunch of over-dyed threads. So I was trying to get some movement going in the water, but the water's looking a little funky here because I was going um, vertical and then I started going horizontal. So I don't know if I want to stitch, unstitch these, pick those out because when it's going horizontal, it looks better for the water. But that's all I have in this um, in at Fox River Mill by Little House Needleworks. So I started over here. So I got this fence and some of this water and stuff down here. That's it. Let me pull this one up and work on it some more soon. Show it some more love. Next one, I think it's Dwelling Place by Teresa Kogut. Started this one back in the fall. Looks like this. So this is one of her pieces she came out with this past year. Started up here. I'm stitching this on. A Lugana. 28 count Lucana in the color Not Another Sampler, just like uh, the at home piece by B Stitch Me. Using all the called for threads. And I don't know, fold it in half <laughs> because that's as far as I got. So I started up in the upper left hand corner and I was working, came down, worked it across. Started trying to come in here to this vase of flowers here. So that's how much I got done on this one. I love Teresa Kogut. Love Teresa Kogut. I say it every time. Love Teresa Kogut. Love Plum Street. Blackbird. There are so many good designers. There's so many beautiful patterns. And that's why I have so many whips. 
I love so many of them. Okay, the last one before I get to my fall and Halloween stitching that I did is another Teresa Kogut. This one was um, at the end of the summer. I was still working on this one, I think in August. One of my patriotic pieces. This is Land That I Love by Teresa Kogut. And I am stitching this on, on 16 count Ada in the color Lamb's Wool. Just a regular non overdyed Ada. And this is how much I have done. So this summer I came in and I was working, I worked the border all the way around so that it made sure it met up. And then I came, I dropped down to this bottom corner and I did all of this down in here. Cause I already had the eagle and this um, flower bowl and stuff down over here. So I had been working in there and sorry, in that crease it says land that I heart. And I already had the eagle and that stuff done before. Love it. I was just watching Elizabeth Ann can stitch her whip parade and she showed her land that I love and hers is almost done. She said she was trying to get it finished last year and it didn't quite make it, but she's getting there. She's down to one corner left on this piece and it is looking very beautiful. Okay, so now into my fall and Halloween pieces that I was working on in the fall, fall time. I'm almost sitting on them over here. <laughs> this first one is Jack's Bash. I started this one back in the fall. Looks like this by Plum Street Samplers. I am stitching this one on. It's an overdyed Lugana. 28 count fawn by fiber on a whim I'm using the called for overdyed cotton threads on this one and this is where I got to on this one so I got a good start got a lot more to do I'm trying to move it along here we're at an hour and 47 minutes Oof. Okay, the next one is Autumn Town by Autumn Lane Stitchery. I've been stitching on this one for a couple of years. Bring it out in the fall. I absolutely love it. There's a lot of stitching in it. Looks like this. Everything is solidly stitched except for the green background parts. That is the fabric. So they suggest that you pick up a green fabric that you like for grass. Um, they use something by Mountaineer Fabrics. I have um, just a straight up uh, green Lugana by, let's see, it is 32 count, green Lugana. I think it's just a, a Zweigart or a Wichelt. I'm using all, well, no, I have a variety of threads in this one that I've picked. But this is where I am. So this fall, I I think I had... Let me try to hold it up here. I think I had the sky to about here. I think it was like to there. So I worked on this over here and I came down and I worked on this down here. So it still goes over to maybe about here. It still goes over a little farther and of course down. So that's where I am on that one. And you can see that it's um, a green, a light green fabric. Sometimes it's hard to tell unless you put it against on the camera, unless I put it against white. I didn't bring my white board over here. This next piece was another new start. I didn't get very far on this. I just was starting it. And um, I think I only worked on it a day. So this is an, a pitiful start. This is Turkey Bay by Plum Street. I just think it was so cute because he's looks like he's looking for turkeys and they're all around him. They're in the water, they're on top up here. So it's a cute piece. This one I am stitching on a piece of 16 count overdyed Ada. 
I'm not sure what the color is. It's not a very big piece. I have a hanging thread. It's only gonna, it's just small. Cause I was, I brought this border down the left side. So that's how tall it is. And I was bringing the water, which is across the bottom here over. And I think that might be about how wide it is. So it's not super, super big. And I just got that little bit of a start on it. I think, um, <clears throat> it, I'm not sure what color it is, the fabric, but it's an, an over dyed, it looks like a picture of this plus 16 count Ada. This one is um, Blackbird Fractor by Plum Street. Looks like this. And I was working on this, I think, in December at my, um, at, in Ocean City. And then I came and I was working on it some more. Or was it in December? I don't know. It's on a 28 count Lugana in the color Oatmeal by Fiber on a Whim. And I think I'm using all the called for colors for this one. Pretty sure. That's where I am. Because before last year, I had this already started last year. Sorry for my dangly thread. Um, but all I had was a little bit of this, this fence down here, this gate, this fence area. So I came and I worked that over some more, did a bunch of this bird and started on this huge tulip next to him. But there's still a long way to go on this one. But I was having a fun with this one. I, I was enjoying this piece. I was stitching on it. I know in my room at Ocean City, the last night I was there, because I was stitching on it the last day I was there, but I can't remember. It might have been in December. I don't know. Sometimes they start blending together because I work on so many different things. So, but I do know I worked on it since July. This one has a new start this fall. And it is another Plum Street and it's called White Pumpkin Farm. A lot of people have done this one and I love it. So I started it, but I did not get very far. And it looks like I've switched my threads around. I think I was stitching from stash. So I've got all my chicken scratch in there or my coffee that I made. It looks like this one is on a piece of wheat Lugana. Is it? Yep, a 28 count wheat Lugana. And I just was working on the border. And I got a start on a white pumpkin. I think I was thinking I was going to take this maybe with me to my retreat. And I was trying to get it where I could work on a lot of this fill-in here at the top. So I got the one pumpkin started. And I was doing this border. That way I could just come in and fill it in. That's what I was thinking. But then I ended up... I think taking something else to my retreat instead because I was starting to work on some Christmas stuff, Christmas and winter pieces. So I might have taken that instead of this fall piece because um, I go there usually uh, into Ocean City in, of course this might have been when I was thinking, of, no, I was probably thinking of taking this to Hat Creek because I go to Hat Creek in October and I was probably trying to get it to an easy spot to work on at Hat Creek, and maybe I didn't get a chance to work on it at Hat Creek, but I did at here. This one is my Gather In by Plum Street. Looks like this. I already had the front of this house, this building here done. I'm pretty sure it, it looks like a house on this side, but it looks like a barn on that side. So, house barn. Um, this one looks like it's... Uh, Cafe Mocchiato, Caramel Mocchiato by Fiber on a Whim. What fabric is this? Uh, yes, 28 Count Lugana in the color Caramel Macchiato by Fiber on a Whim. I am using some of the called for, some that I picked myself for the threads. And I was working on filling in a lot of the grass down here because I laughed and I said, when I picked this up last time, I did a lot of this fence all the way over to here. 
because I didn't have any of this done. And I thought that way I could just fill in grass when I go to my retreat and I got that far. But that is a lot of stitching <laughs> to fill in all that grass. It's insane. <laughs> but that is a big, beautiful house. And um, it's looking good. Sometimes when I look on the camera, that green looks so bright. But in person, it looks more like a, a mossy green. It, for some reason, it picks up so green green on the camera. But it's not quite that green. It's more like a mossy yellowy green. Okay. Oops, I'm leaving stuff behind. Uh, this next one is Ghoul Tide Welcome by Plum Street. Looks like that. A lot of love of her. I must love a lot of her fall pieces. Uh, I'm stitching this one on a piece of 16 count ale by Picture This Plus. And I am here on the left side. I think um, since July when I picked it up in the fall because I already had it started. I think I was working all down in here. That's how far I am on a ghoul tide welcome. So that's only how tall it is. But it's a long piece. Because I still got that big crazy house to do. The rest of that grass all the way across the bottom. There's a witch. A witch girl. Uh, this next one is a Prairie Schooler Pumpkin Patch. Let's see if you can see it good enough. I'm doing the big one. Started up here. I just got like up in here working on it. This one it looks like I'm doing on a 16 count Ada. It's an overdyed Ada. Probably a Picture This Plus. Yes, Dubloon by Picture This Plus. Uh, working with all the called for DMCs. And I'm gonna be able to get two pieces on this one. I have another piece that's very similar to this. It uses a lot of the similar colors. I think it's called, it's got witches on it. But this one is, what is this one again? Pumpkin patch. So I kind of got up there in the corner done, was working on some of the border. But the other one that's, I got it in here with it, that's gonna go on the other half of this material is when witches go riding. Here it was something with witches. So I'm gonna do this one on the other side, uh, this piece of doubloon, because they're not very big pieces. These are um, kind of small. Like I said, this is a 16 count, and it's gonna fit on this half of fabric really easy, because that's only how wide it is. So, Pumpkin Patch by uh, prairie schooler. Alrighty. Let's see what we can do here. This next one are two pieces that I was working on. The first one is by Tiny Modernist. It's a bell pool. It's called Spooky Halloween Bell Pool. So it's kind of like my Jolly Christmas Bell Pool, where it's a really long piece, long and skinny. I was working on it and working in here last fall. I am doing this one on this darker piece of fabric. It is, I have two pieces in here, I'm working on both of these. This is 16 count Ada in the color Mirage by Picture This Plus. And I'm using the called for DMCs. And <laughs> let's see if I can just fold it up. So this is where I am on this piece. So um, this is gonna be a jar here of spiders. So I got the label and the kind of the lid stitched in. But I worked pretty much all down in here um, this fall. I think this was some of my TV stitching. Sometimes I pick a piece a lot of times to stitch on in the other room while I'm watching TV in the evening with my husband. And then sometimes I stitch in here during the day while he's working or on the weekends or whenever. 
You know, he's doing something else. I stitch in here in my craft room, and a lot of times it's pieces that I'll have on a big, like my 11 by 17 Q snaps, like these pieces. If it's on 11 by 17 Q snap, usually it's because I have it in here and I have it on my Lowry floor stand to hold it for me. Um, otherwise, I work on smaller um, 11 by 11 Q snaps or smaller hoops. This next piece is Halloween Letters by Primrose Cottage Stitches. This was another one I was working on while I was watching TV with my husband, and this one is being stitched on 28 Count Lagana in the color Brown Sugar by Fiber on a Whim. And I'm using most of the called for, but I think I've picked a couple of different colors in it. But there I am on this piece. This I think was a new start. I think I, think I started it. Well, I might have started, it might have been one of these two might have both been a May, a mania start. And then um, I picked them up this fall and worked on them some more because they didn't get very much stitching in May. Uh, this next piece I started this fall. Um, it was my first start on a linen to try and see if I could work on linen because this was a small piece. It's An Autom by uh, Tralala. Little tiny witchy girl, and I am stitching this one with call for DMCs. I'm stitching it on a piece of 32 count Belfast linen in the color flax. I still have a thread hanging here, and um, this is how far I got. So I got the, the witch's skirt, I got the word boo that's in the cauldron, and this bottom green in there. And I was like, yes, I can stitch on linen. Uh, I don't, I still don't like a lot of slubs, so I like to look at my linen and make sure it's not covered in slubs. Um, nice, really big ones that I can't work around. Like I said, I can stitch on linen. Still can't say I'm a favorite fan of linen, but it's okay. I don't think my stitches look as nice as they do on even weave, but it works out okay. This next one is Away We Ride by Blackbird Designs. And I decided to stitch this on a little bit different color fabric. So I'm stitching this on a piece of 28 count Lugana in the color Light Moss Green by To Die For Fabrics. And I think I'm gonna have to change one color on this because it wasn't showing up that well. So when I pull this back up to start stitching on it again, which probably won't be till fall this year, I might have to restitch that. But this is where I am on this piece. So this is Light Moss Green by To Die For Fabrics. I decided to do mine on a mossy green color. But this, the A is showing up good, but the W and the A don't show up all that well. So I might have to switch, maybe just color, do all the letters in that color, the darker one instead. We'll see. So that's where I am on Away We Ride. Sometimes I just like to change my background fabric color just because, because I can. Um, this next piece is Halloween at Hopper and Hollow. And if you've been following me, you know you saw me show that I finished a block on this one this fall. This is what it looks like. I already had this block finished, this one half done, this part most of the way done here. So I came in, I finished this block and this block this fall on this one. This one is being stitched on a piece of 16 count Ada in the color J by Picture This Plus. It's kind of a purpley blue color. I had already also gridded in all of my Hawk Run Hollows last year. So I gridded in all 12 of the blocks, or actually there's only, I think, 11 blocks because the middle block is double the size. So I came in, I finished this half of this block and I did that block this year. So at this rate, it's only gonna take me <laughs> four or five more years to finish this piece. If I do a couple a year. We'll see. I love it. This is fun stitching. 
a um, lot of stitching in these pieces, but it's enjoyable to me. So I'm getting ready to try to stitch some on my Christmas at Cochrane Hollow. I've got that one sitting aside. I just haven't gotten around to working on her yet this winter, but that is my plan. I'm hoping to get some stitching on that one. And I'm going to keep plugging away on all my hawk runs so that um, they're such big pieces. I want to, I want to get them done. I don't want them sitting around for 20 years. This next piece is by Plum Street Samplers. It's Olga Stocking. Looks like that. I picked this up at Keepsakes when I was there for StitchCon. Uh, not this year, but the year before. Not this past year. I think it was in 2022. And I'm stitching this one on a piece of 32 count Lugana in the color wheat. Oh, I may go ahead and. Oh, this couch for some reason is bugging my back. Um, that's where I am. So I think this fall when I picked it up, I was working, I was doing all over here, worked, did a few more leaves, worked the trunk down. Because all I had before, I think, was a, were a few of these leaves and maybe one bird. Oh. But see how my the stitching looks so much neater? I don't know. On 32 count Lugana. Just the plain, not over dyed Lugana. My stitches just, everything just looks neater. The fabric itself even stays neater. It's not all wrinkly. Because I didn't iron any of these pieces. but And this has been sitting in a bag. And you can see where it was kind of folded and things like that. But it's not super wrinkly either. It's going to be easy to iron out any little wrinkles and creases that are in it because it's just the fabrics i don't know it's just got it's got body but it's not too stiff it's like it's like goldilocks it's like not too stiff not too floppy not too loose just perfect this next one is halloween sampler by Teresa kogut this is one i restarted this fall but i was not enjoying the fabric i was doing it on so I restarted on, on 28 Count Lugana. It's an overdyed. It's Amber Waves by Atomic Ranch. And the pattern looks like this. And I started way up in here. I already had like about that much of it done. And then I was like, I really am not feeling this fabric for this piece. So I started it over. So Amber Waves by Atomic Ranch Fabrics. Lugana, and so it's kind of a, a mellowy, orangey, yellowy color, the fabric. That's pretty true to color right there. And this is how far I got on my restart this fall. So I am there, starting all over on this one, but I actually love the way it looks. The oranges on the other fabric, they just weren't showing up really well, and there's a lot of orange in this piece. The black showed up fine, because Black's not too hard to match on a fabric unless you go with a really, really, really dark fabric. But my orange was just fading in. And I did not like how you weren't going to be able to see the orange really well. But on this fabric, you can. So, because there's a lot of orange in this because there's a lot of pumpkins on this. And um, like this, it actually looks yellowy, but it's orange. This bird up here is orange. There's pumpkin people. The dresses down here and these witches, this this moon, just there's so much in here that's orange and all of that was not gonna show up really nice. So, so I started over and I like it. I'm happy with it. Because it was getting where I didn't wanna pick that piece up because I wasn't, I was like, eh, I don't know. And I realized it was cause the fabric color wasn't working. Okay. Oh, I'm getting there, people. I'm getting there. We're, we're getting close to the end. This next one is um, a new Teresa Kogut pattern. Picked this up at In Stitches in Alexandria, Virginia. When I was out that way, I was up at uh, the D.C. airport, and it's not too far from there. So on my way home, I stopped in, picked up this while I was there. Picked it up and started working on it this fall, and I got this. Some of this down in here done. It's down in the bottom left-hand corner. I'm using all of the called for colors. Most of them are DMC. And I think there's a uh, one-week style works, it looks like. 
This is on a piece of, this is on a piece of fabric. I mean fabric, of course it's on a piece of fabric. A piece of linen. It's a 32 count winter woolens linen by Seraphim. I think I picked this up at In Stitches also. While I was there and I picked up the pattern, I picked up a piece of fabric. Oops. And <laughs> that's where I got to. All oh, that fanfare. Um, yeah. Oh, I, this, my border goes over a little bit farther, but that's the meat of it right there. So I got the bottom half of that pumpkin person done and some of the flowers around her. She's got flowers coming out of her pockets. <clears throat> so those are spaces for to stitch the flowers in. Okay. Um, I forgot to show you though, I had a start on um, this Stargazer by Mirabilia. Let me show you these two that are on the scroll frame down here. Stargazer by Mirabilia. I had her on a different piece of fabric, was not liking how she was looking. Then I tried to convert her de her colors to something else. Still did not like her. So I decided I like the original colors fine. It's not the colors, it was the fabric I was using. So then I switched and I started her over on this piece of um, 32 count Lugana, but I think it's a, I can't remember what the color of this one is, but it, this is what it looks like right here is true to color. It's like golden flax, something, something, I think. But so I just got a little start on her. She's not very far. And my only, uh, and my other Christmas piece that I forgot to show you because it's sitting on a scroll frame over here was one I was working on and it's Santa of the Forest by Lavender and Lace. I'm stitching this one on a piece of 16 count sage summer khaki Ada. And it came in and I was working on the bottom of Santa Claus's cape. And I am this far on him. I love him. So I was down, I was working down in here. I had, I think like a band, a little of this here. So I came and I finished all of that cape. This one's another pretty solidly stitched piece and he's gonna be big because the head of Santa goes up here, his head and this is the very, very bit of his beard right here. So his head is almost as big as my hand, his head and his beard. And then there's a, a dove. You can see the outline for a dove that's gonna be in here. The rest of his cape that comes down. There's an owl that sits up on his shoulder. So there's still quite a bit of stitching to do in this. and a wolf. And I just keep um, some of my things that I keep on scroll frames. I just have these, they're the hypoallergenic kind of like pillowcase covers that zip up that you can put on your pillow. They, my frames fit in there perfect. I had those two pieces. Now, the only other piece I have left that I worked on, the last whip to show you is um, the first Thanksgiving by Twin Peaks Primitives. So I'm gonna throw this right back in here. Sorry for the company. And this one looks like this. And I got, it's being stitched on a piece of 16 count Ada in the color Dirty. And I'm using kind of I'm pulling some some colors out of my stash because some colors weren't working and some of the called for you know, overdyes and things. And this is where I am on this piece. So I was working down here, I got the word Plymouth, and I was working down in here in these buildings and stuff over and, and finished framing in this middle vignette section. on it and um, when I was talking about this one last time in my last video and I'm only gonna I don't like to get I don't like to give 
attention to negative comments on my videos. I don't like to get political on my videos or anything like that. But I do have a little bit of a rant to go on about that piece. This piece here. Somebody commented and said that the la on my last video, I said, I really was trying to get down here. I wanted to get down here to the little pilgrim lady and the little Indian girl down here. When I said that, I got a comment from a commenter, just one, that said, do not call her an Indian girl. She is an American Indian or a Native American, and you should respect her because she was here before we were. I want to address that comment on here, and I want to address that comment. 99% of the comments that I get from you ladies and gentlemen are nice kind comments. I don't like drama. I don't like hate speech. I don't like people picking on other people. Um, and when somebody said that to me, it really, um, I don't want to say hit a nerve, but it did. It just, it really did, I guess kind of maybe did hit a nerve because I'm gonna tell you, I told this commenter, I said, I absolutely respect the Native American population because my mom, her father was an American Indian. My mom is half American Indian, makes me a quarter American Indian. To tell me that I can't call her a little Indian girl because I'm being derogatory to those people Really, this is going to be a tangent I'm going to get on in a little tirade. I'm going to get up on my soapbox. I don't like people to stir up hatred where there is no hatred. I even had to Google whether it is okay to call this uh, person an Indian. This little depiction here. just It's just as fine as calling this lady a pilgrim. I looked it up and that's an acceptable term. Indian, Native American, American Indian all acceptable terms. If you know what tribe that Indian person or that American Indian comes from, there are Eastern Indians, but if you know what tribe that American Indian comes from, then they say use their tribal. You know, if they're a, a Cherokee, a, a Choctaw, a um, Algonquin, a, a, a Navajo, whatever they are, you can address them by their tribal affiliation. But to call her an Indian girl, you know, was not in any way a hateful speech on my part. Because I thought that is just totally ridiculous. And I told my husband about it and he laughed. He goes, that person obviously does not know you at all. For one, like I said, I have American Indian heritage. Do I look it? No, because I am three quarters of European. I have a lot of Irish and German in me that probably, you know, we, my husband, he, he laughs. He says, okay, the Irish and the Indian were battling in you and the Irish won because I have reddishy brown hair, blue green eyes and freckly skin, but does not make me not part Indian, you know? And so Native American, American Indian, whatever you want to call it. I call myself an American. My husband, is 100% Puerto Rican. My son-in-law is 100% Puerto Rican, born and raised in Puerto Rico until he came here to the States in his high school years. He joined the army, he married my daughter, they have two sons, they are half Puerto Rican. I have a Vietnamese sister-in-law. I have, um, what else do I have? My oldest granddaughter, her dad is black, African-American, whatever you want to call him. I, I love my grandchildren. So to call me in any way, speaking of a certain race, or nationality, whatever, of people, trying to stir up hate where there is no hate makes me angry. So that comment actually made me angry. And comments like that need to be kept to some, they need to keep it to themselves because they do not understand where my talk is coming from. And I know that most of you know where I'm coming from. And I just had to say something about it because I get so tired of people 
getting behind their keyboards and thinking that they know everything about somebody and they got to sit there and spew hatred where there is no hatred because people who know me know I am absolutely not a racist at all. So I have lots of different races in my family alone, let alone having somebody telling me what, you know, that I'm being like talking nasty about this, this depiction here. In no way was I doing that. So I am sorry, I got on my soapbox about that, but that just floors me when people try to talk and say something that they don't know anything about. And it's the same thing with my whip parade. I was just watching Elizabeth Ann Kinstitch and she was talking about, please don't comment on here about me UFOing things and stuff like that, because I don't want to hear that hateful speech. You know what, It's it is, it's like, I don't care if you have one Thing that you're stitching on and your monogamous stitch on it great wonderful enjoy your cross stitch that's all I ask people to do enjoy it I don't judge you if you have 500 I you know it's who cares who cares enjoy your craft why do people want to get on and stir up hatred is beyond me so my channel I've never gone on here and I talk politics I don't get on here with drama I don't come on here trying to talk you guys into living a certain lifestyle. You know, it's just a cross-stitch channel. And when people want to get on and make negative comments to other people's videos, it's just, you can unsubscribe from me then, you know, unsubscribe, don't watch. You know, there are sometimes there have been videos I have watched that I don't agree with what the person is talking about or whatever. I don't watch their videos, but do I ever comment a negative comment on there? No. Some people are for you and some aren't. If I'm not your cup of tea, don't watch my channels. Period. Simple. Easy. So I just, sometimes the negative comments are like uncalled for and ridiculous. And it just, ugh. I only have one more thing I think I wanted to talk to you guys about. And I'm sorry I got on my soapbox. I'm sorry I got all, it just... Sometimes, like I have been doing this channel for what it'll be three years in May, so two and a half years. And the negative comments on here, I don't say anything, I don't, you know, try not to give it too much credence, you know, anything like that. But you know what? When they sit there and try to basically maybe try to make a comment that makes me sound like I am talking down to a certain people group, that I'm being in a way racist, is a bunch of BS, plain and simple. So the next couple of things I want to show you guys, let me get back on my track because now I made myself, I'm, if I took my blood pressure, it's probably up because I made myself all angry. That's the Irish American Indian. I mean, I ah. So, because my husband will say, oh my gosh, he's on the war path. And he says that, do I get offended? No, I'll call him a crazy Puerto Rican sometimes. You know, we laugh. It's all in lighthearted, good fun. We don't get mad at each other. We come from two different nationalities, but you know what? In the end, we're two people. Everybody bleeds red. So anyways, another thing that I want to do, like I had showed you that, um, and then I'm going to let you guys go because gosh, we're at almost two and a half hours here. I'd showed you where I was working on the snowman piece that was out of a magazine that was probably 25 years ago that I was stitching on. So I also have, maybe I have about a dozen ancient whips that I have kept that I really want to still finish. But I haven't been touching them because I've been starting on the new things. So I thought what I want to try to do is start picking up some of them and try to get some finished this year, maybe some next year, and try to whittle away and get those finished. Because I really do want these finished. Because like this one's probably laying 90% done and this is ridiculous that I don't have her done. So this one is Guardian Angel by Lavender and Lace and she looks like this. Unfortunately, I was stitching on her probably 20 years ago. I wrote, for some reason, I put my DMC colors all over the back of the card that she came on. Now I know better than to write on my stuff, but I wrote on that one. And um, so she's being stitched on 16 count Ada because that's all I used to stitch on, you know, 20 years ago. Because I probably started her in like 2001, 2002, 1999, something like that. And this is how far I am. She's on a 16 count Ada in a color lamb's wool. And you can see the creases in her because she's been sitting, waiting to be finished for 20 years. 
all I have left on her is to finish this, I guess, kind of, like a, it's an oval frame around her here. And I think there's a little, I think it's down here in the corner, this corner. There's a little bit of flowers that look like this here, over here. And the reason I always leave these flower things to the end is because that's a lot of confetti stitching. There's probably seven or eight different colors in here. And so that's not my f most fun stitching to do. So I usually <laughs> will hold off on it. So I got a little there and just this. So after I finish that snowman, my next ancient whip that I want to pick on to try to pick up and try to finish is her. This Guardian Angel by Lavender and Lace. So she is almost done. I even backstitched her face and the baby's face. I mean, they're, it's good to go as soon as I finish that. So I want to try to pick that up and finish that piece. And then the other one, the next one, if I could get all three of these finished this year, because like I said, I have about 12. And so if I could get all three finished, um, of these at least, then I feel like, okay, I got a quarter of them done. And this next one is Sweet Dreams by Lavender and Lace. And I have all of this one done, except for this up here again. <clears throat> and it looks like a little bunch of the flowers here. No, here. Yeah, these little bunches of flowers. Because there again, that was the confetti stitching. That. <laughs> I mean, I even did her, the gold stitching in her. I backstitched her and the baby's face. And this one looks like it's on a piece of khaki. 16 count Ada in the color khaki. Or sage. Like my um, Santa of the Forest. So, I started... Um, I think it was the year before, I think in 2021, I pulled it up and I was trying to start this, do this border and that's only how far I got. But you can see, I even put the gold in, in her dress. There are no beads in these older lavender and lace charts. Um, usually not in these two anyway, they have some gold stitching and a, just a tiny bit of back stitching in the face and the hands. But, um, I have this little bit of confetti stitching in here and then this wreath that goes around it's like a twisted ribbon with flowers that goes around the top of her and this will be finished another one that is 90 percent done so those are some thoughts you know um hopefully i get around and i get and i do those so that i stick to my plan there and i do that I have a mess here because I didn't put everything back in its bag, but I did pretty good. So, um, I'm sorry about the tangent, everybody. I really am. Sometimes I, I, I don't know if I knew how to edit, I might edit it out, but I think sometimes things need to be said. Sometimes negativity needs to be addressed. I don't like negativity on my channel. I want it off of my channel. I don't try to have it there. I don't, I want everybody to come here and just enjoy looking at cross stitch. That's all. That's it. I don't make a dime off my channel. Never have. I don't ask from any anything from anybody. Oh, buy me charts. Put give give me money for one, two, three stitch or whatever. I don't do any of that. I am here just to share my love of cross stitch with you guys. So to have to put up with negative comments is kind of um I don't know. It's just it's people feel like they can sit at home behind their keyboard and say whatever they want. And that's becoming a thing anymore. And these people that get on their high horse and think that they're going to school other people on what they should and shouldn't be doing is stupid and ridiculous. So it just makes me angry. So um, a lot of times I don't even address the negativity. Um, but um, the rare occasions like that one, that just, I guess, struck a nerve because they obviously don't know me because... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, anyways, my plan will be, um, I'm going to do my 62 new starts this year. I want to try to work on some of my ancient whips. And I'm pretty much going to stitch on what I want, when I want. So when I want to pull up one of these, I'm going to try to keep one of these kind of in the rotation. And 
as I'm like, oh, let me work on that piece and see if I can get that one done. Because after the snowman's done, then I want to try to pick up Guardian Angel and see if I can just get that little thing done on her and she's finished. And then, um, then Sweet Dreams, see if I can get those things finished. Um, but other than that, I don't have a lot of plans and goals because I like to keep my um, stuff loose and fluid and just enjoy my stitching. And I'm planning on getting back, I'll at least try to do a video every month. That's my plan. That's what I want to try to do at the first of every month. So hopefully I'll be back here by the beginning of February to give you guys an update on what I've been stitching on in January and show you all the new starts I started in January for my 62 new starts. Other than that, it's been two and a half hours, so I think this video is more well than long enough. So I'm going to let you guys go. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your month, your year, um, that you get some good stitching in and that everybody is happy, happy healthy. And until next time, you guys, I love you. Bye-bye.